Rachel Mayo, welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. I'm going to be discussing how the new moon that's happening on the 23rd of January 2023 is going to affect you according to your ascendant sign. This new moon is happening in the sign of Aquarius. This is the first new moon of the year, so essentially, this is when you're supposed to make your New Year's resolutions and your wish list. It also coincides with the Chinese New Year, the year of the rabbit. This lunation is happening at 132 degrees of Aquarius, very close to 2 degrees. The new moon will occur at 3.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that is New York time, so make sure to check for your own location so that you can get the correct ascendant. The sun and the moon just completed a conjunction with Pluto, who is still currently transiting in the sign of Capricorn at around 28 degrees. This is a very intense conjunction. There, there may have been some power plays, some deep transformation. Things may have been dug up, dark emotions, things we don't want to deal with. And for some people, other people, other ones have brought out your dark side. So essentially that means that we're entering into this new moon with a dark, deep, transformative energy of Pluto. So we're already feeling sensitive and perhaps emotional right before the begin, right before this new moon. I would like to say a big thank you to all my new subscribers. I'm almost at that 10,000 mark and I'm hoping that whoever is watching this video is going to subscribe right now. So go ahead and press that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. There's no charge. Please press it. I'd also like to say a big thank you to all the people that supported me, to all the people that supported me last year by booking a reading with me. And if you'd like to get a reading with me, I'm running a special 40% off most of my 40% off most of my readings. This is a limited time special, so book now. And if you can't afford to book a reading with me at this time, please support my channel by pressing like and by sharing my videos with your friends, family, or your social media platforms. You can also support my channel by liking this video and by leaving me a comment in the comment section of this video. And for those that, and for those that don't know this about me, I'm an esthetician and I've been an esthetician for over 20 years. I recently added a section on my website for skincare products. So if you're interested in skincare products, please visit my website. The closest aspect that's happening at this lunation is the fact that Venus is going to con Venus and Saturn are conjunct at 24 degrees of Capricorn. Why is this important? Saturn is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. We always look to see what the ruling planet or planets in this case of the lunation are doing in the lunation chart. Venus, the ruler of the transiting north node in Taurus, is hosting Uranus. Uranus is the modern ruler of Aquarius. Saturn, the traditional ruler of Aquarius, is currently transiting his own sign and is conjunct Venus, who is the ruler of the transiting north node. So Venus is being hosted by Saturn, the ruler of this lunation, while Uranus, the other ruler of this lunation, is also being hosted by Venus. So there is some, there is a, there is a mutual reception going on. The Venus Saturn conjunction in the sign of Aquarius is going to bring an element of seriousness, karma, to the issues in your Aquarius house. Venus and Saturn have a wide square to Uranus and the North Node. The square to the North Node is called a skipped step. The square aspect is a challenging aspect which pushes us into taking action. However, the skip step part of this square has already happened. So the Saturn square Uranus aspect is an old aspect. So we're probably going to be still dealing with issues from the past. Venus square Uranus aspect happened on the 14th of January. So this is another past issue. There could have been some type of unusual circumstances happening in your, in, in your relationships or with your finances. 
coming back to the Venus Saturn conjunction, this is an aspect. This is an aspect that is going to require that you get serious about the issues in your Aquarius house. There will be a need for restriction or reaching the limits and making a commitment, a serious commitment, taking relationships to the next level. For others, if your relationship has not been working, this is a time where you this is the time where this relationship is going to break. And for others that have been dating for a while, and the only next step to take is commitment or marriage. This is the time that this subject is going to come up. The other reason why this is so karmic and important is the fact that Saturn conjunct Venus is not going to happen in the sign of Aquarius for another 29 years. So this could really, so this, this could be really life changing for some. Saturn is going to be exiting the sign of Aquarius early in March. Saturn tends to leave a gift when he exits a sign, especially the signs that he rules. So the issues or the things that we initiate at around the time of this new moon are issues that we're going to be dealing with for a very long time to come. These are issues that are, these are situations or issues that are going to stay in our life, perhaps for another 29 years. This lunation conjuncting Pluto in the sign of Capricorn, who is also about to complete his transit in that sign and will enter Aquarius in March. It's, this is important because Pluto is somewhat, Pluto is giving a, Pluto is giving us an idea of the issues that we'll probably have to be dealing with when he enters in the sign of Aquarius, which deals with the 11th house, with the groups that we belong to, with social media, and Pluto always transforms whatever it Pluto always transforms whatever it touches. Remember when he entered into the sign of Capricorn around 2008, there was the financial breakdown and the breakdown of long and the breakdown of long-standing traditions and structures. Our long-standing traditions, our financial system, the government, and our author and the authority figures, all those issues fall under the tenth house, which is a Capricorn house, and that is the highest point in the zodiac. So whatever happened at that time, the whole world knew about it. And now Pluto is entering into the sign of Aquarius, the the, the sign that rules masses of people, social media, the internet, and humanity at large. This is really going to be big and life-changing. Uranus is an outer planet, and when outer planets change direction, they shake things up in the house that they are transiting. And for all of us, this is our Taurus house. So if things have felt stuck and stagnant in this house, things are going to be shaken up. The, 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 things are going to be shaken up. The earth is going to literally shake in this house. Things definitely have to start moving forward. If you'd like to know how this lunation is going to affect you according to your own natal birth chart, I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com. Aquarius is the 11th house of the zodiac. The 11th house rules over the groups that we belong to, our friends, our elder siblings, our aunts and uncles. It also rules the social media platforms that we belong to. Aquarius is ruled by planet Uranus and Saturn. Uranus rules over the internet, new technologies, anything that's so advanced and futuristic. Also the things that are unique, unusual, very different from the norm. So it's time to start working on that idea that you think is so new and advanced and unusual and you think others are not going to be very accepting. This is the time for you to bring out those unusual ideas, unusual topic that you think are not going to necessarily be supported by the public. This lunation is giving you that supportive energy to make those unique ideas happen. And since the 11th house rules over large groups of people, so start something new that will serve the people, something that will serve humanity. Most importantly, the 11th house rules over our hopes, dreams, and wishes. Our hopes, dreams, and wishes. This is the house that rewards the hard work that we did in the 10th house. This is the house where you're going to get the promotion, the accolades, the financial windfalls, and wish fulfillment so essentially that means that the things we will be initiating at around the time of this lunation are things that we've been working on for a while it's time to get paid it's time to get promoted it's time to get your wish fulfillment so the other important aspect here is the fact that jupiter is in conjunction with juno an exact conjunction at this lunation and this conjunction is sextile the new moon bringing wonderful opportunities in really in areas of in areas of commitment and partnership 
Mars is also direct at the time of this lunation and Mars is also trining this lunation, allowing energy to fall harmoniously between these houses. Mercury is also transiting direct in the sign of Capricorn at the time of this lunation. The ruler of this, one of the rulers of this lunation, Uranus, is also going to turn direct the day after this lunation. So all the energies are now finally moving forward and all the, plan all the planets will be moving forward for about three months. So this energy is supporting forward movement. So if you're experiencing lack of energy and lack of motivation, Mars moving direct and trining Jupiter, Mars moving direct and sextiling Jupiter is giving you that boost and confidence to push all your ideas and projects forward. And now you have Mercury, the, and you have, now you have Mercury, the planet of communication and business, also moving direct. This is time for you to really make, this is the time for you to make those initiations. Uranus, the ruler of this lunation, is moving direct, the, is moving direct a day after this lunation. And when an outer planet, a big planet like Uranus, changes direction, you're definitely going to feel it. It's going to shake up all the stagnancy that's been going on in your Taurus house. So this is another point where things are, this is another area where things are going to be moving forward. This is the new moon that you've been waiting for. This is the lunation to make those big initiations. No matter how weird, no matter how weird, unique, or different your ideas may be, this is the new moon to push that forward. So who will be affected the most by this lunation? It is the fixed signs. The fixed signs are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. Aquarius will be affected the most simply because this lunation is happening in your sign. Taurus and Scorpio are going to have the challenging aspect of the square. So they're going to be pushed into taking action at the time of this lunation. Leo will be experiencing an opposition aspect. That means that other people are going to oppose you. So if you're a fixed sign, you're going to feel this energy really intensely because it's going to highlight all your angles and activate. It's going to activate and highlight all your angles. And when those are activated, you could have major changes in any area of your life. The, the fire signs are going to have a better experience with this lunation. The fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. They will be experiencing the sextile aspect. This aspect brings opportunities and it allows the energy to flow harmoniously. The sextile aspect, however, requires you to take action. You have to make some type of effort here. Take advantage of opportunities that are presented to you or are, that are presented to you at the time of this lunation. The air signs are going to have the most positive experience with this lunation and the air signs are Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. The air signs are going to have the trine aspect which allows the energy to flow harmoniously between the houses and if you have points or planets in all the air signs you're going to have what we call a grand air trine this is very positive and supportive if you were born on or before january 21st a few days before or a few days after you're going to feel this energy very intensely because it's going to be part of your solar return chart this is the energy you're going to deal with from this birthday until the next birthday this will definitely be a year to remember there will be major brand new beginnings in the area of Aquarius wherever that house will fall in your solar return chart this is an excellent time for you to get a solar return chart reading with me because because you want to know where this energy is going to be active and how you can use it to the best of your and how you can use it to the best of your advantage. You can book a reading with me at rachel-mayor.com. Most of my readings are now 40% off for a limited time. So let's take a look at the aspects in this chart and I'm only going to I'm only going to focus on the major aspects. There are other aspects going on at this time. They're only important if they're aspecting anything in your own natal birth chart. So, so this lunation is happening at one degree of Aquarius. That is the degree that is highlighted and activated. So therefore, that means you have to look in your own natal birth chart to see where you have one, 132 degree of Aquarius, two degrees of Aquarius, three degrees before the activation point or three degrees after. So that means the last degrees of Capricorn are also included here. 
So we have Pluto at around 28 degrees of Capricorn, which is very close to this lunation. The Pluto New Moon conjunction is trining Mars, who is currently transiting in the sign of Gemini. Mars just recently turned direct on the 12th of January. So he is moving ahead. The Pluto New Moon conjunction is also sextile Juno, is also sextile Jupiter and is also sextile Jupiter and Juno. This is a positive aspect that's going to bring us opportunities. The sextile aspect requires you to take action. Juno-Jupiter conjunction is a very positive aspect. It's exact at this lunation. So this means that there will be some type of commitment. There will be some type of commitment or partnership or, or, or partnership formed at the time of this lunation. The new moon is also trying Mars. So let's look at the rulers of this lunation and the rulers of this lunation are Uranus and Saturn. What is Saturn doing? Saturn is conjunct Venus. I've already spoken at length about this conjunction in the introduction. So we know that Saturn wants you to get serious here and Saturn and Venus and Venus wants a commitment. They are both squaring Uranus who's transiting in the sign of Taurus and the North Node. This aspect is a challenging aspect that we've already been dealing with. The challenges that are going to be brought up are all the challenges that need you to make a commitment. Aries Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your 11th house. This is where you will have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings. As we all know, whenever you begin something new, something is likely to come to an end. This is also the area where you're going to make some type of commitment. This is the area where you're also going to have to make some type of commitment because of the Venus Saturn conjunction. The Aries, if you've not listened to the beginning of this introduction, I suggest that you go and listen to the whole introduction because I talk about what the 11th house rules over everything that everything that is 11th house is in the introduction some of you are going to have new beginnings in the groups that you belong to the, the clubs and social media platforms that you belong to are highlighted at this lunation some of you will have a new beginning with an older sibling an uncle an aunt or perhaps some of you will meet a benefactor at this time who is going to help you bring your who is going to help you bring your hopes, wishes, and dreams into a reality. So if you've been wishing and hoping to start something really unique with the groups that you belong to or, or, or on the internet, this is the new moon to do so. No matter how unique and different that idea is, this is the time for you to get serious, get real, go for it. Get, get serious and real about it, go for it. And for some of you who are in a situationship, this is the time that you or the other person is going to demand or require a commitment to keep this relationship going. So essentially that means either that relationship situationship is going to come to an end or it's going to progress to the next level into a real long-term relationship or perhaps even marriage a or perhaps even a full commitment like marriage for some. That situationship or friendship is not going to stay the same after this lunation. Your ruling planet Mars is still transiting the sign of Gemini. Mars is now moving direct. This is very positive. I'm sure you're feeling a whole lot better energy-wise and general positivity. Mars is forming a wide trine to this lunation. This is very positive and harmonious energy. The thing, things in these two houses are going to start flowing harmoniously. So Aries, if you've been sitting at home and wondering why things are not moving forward or why you have no energy, your, your planet is moving forward. There are no more excuses. It's time to get out there and mingle. Go and mix with like-minded people. Be active in social media, in the groups that you belong to. You just never know who you could meet at this time. You could meet a benefactor who will support your ideas. You could also make brand new connections. Meet new friends at this time. And since this is the house of manifestation, this is the house that rewards the work that we've been doing in the 10th house, this is a wish fulfillment point. Some of you could get the accolades, the financial windfalls, the promotion, or this could be the beginning of you seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. This is a very positive new moon for you, Aries.
just remember that the sextile aspects requires you to take advantage of opportunities make an effort to be proactive taurus ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your 10th house this is the area where you're going to have a brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever we begin something something has to come to a close this is the area also that is requiring you to get serious and make a commitment to some in the 10th house Taurus, this might be a challenging new moon for you simply because Taurus squares Aquarius. Square is a challenging aspect that requires you to take act, that pushes you into taking action. So there might be some tough decisions to be made at the time of this lunation. Aquarius for you is an angle house. It is the MC. It is the highest point in the zodiac. And whenever there is a lunation, at the MC it activates all the other angles in your chart because the MC is going to square the descendant this activates your relationship area the MC also squares the ascendant it activates you and makes you feel things much more personally the MC opposes the IC that is your home area that is your most sensitive spot in your natal birth chart so there could be changes all around and this also depends on what is being activated in your own chart. The 10th house rules over our standing in society, the job that we do, the government, authority figures, our bosses. It also is the parental axis. So something could be going on with either your father or your mother. So there could be a new beginning in any of those areas. Since this moon is happening in your 10th house, you could have a new beginning with your standing in society. If you've been single, this could mean that you change your status from single to married. For some, it could also mean that you change your status from married to widowed or divorced. And if you've been working at your job for a very long time, you don't feel appreciated at your job or your job no longer has meaning, it does not give you fulfillment, or you're not being appreciated. Some of you may decide to quit your job at this time and go off your, on your own and start a new business. Maybe it's an idea of a business that you think is just really out there and weird, or too unique for, or, or perhaps too unique. This is the time that this energy is supporting exactly just that. If that's what you're planning to do, just go for it. And if you've been in discussions about a promotion or a pay raise with your employer, this is the time that the subject will come to a decision. You're either going to get the promotion or you're not going to get the promotion. This all depends on how this lunation is aspecting your own natal birth chart. The best way to find out how this is going to work out for you personally is by booking a reading, is by getting a reading. The ruling planet Venus is involved in this lunation because Venus is conjunct Saturn. Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius and the ruler of this lunation. So this, so this lunation is very personal for you, Taurus. When Saturn conjuncts a planet, it restricts whatever that planet represents. So Taurus, this means that you might feel some type of restriction with yourself. If Taurus is your ascendant, the ascendant is the self. And if it's your moon, you might feel some restriction with your emotions. If it's your sun, you might feel some restriction or some restriction with your identity or standing in society. Taurus, there's a lot more going on in your sign. You still have the North Node in your sign. Uranus is turning direct a day after this lunation in your sign. So the Taurus house is really going to be shaken up. All the things that have been stuck and stagnant are going to be shaken up. You're going to have to make decisions. Things are going to have to move forward. So as you can see, this situation can play out very differently depending on what exactly is being touched by this lunation and by Saturn. You are going to be restricted. You are going to be asked to get serious about issues in your 10th house and your identity and your status, your standing in society. Gemini, Ascendant, Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your ninth house. This is the area where you're going to this is the area where you're going to have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings. As we know, whenever you begin something new, something has to come to a close. This is the area where Venus is going to conjunct Saturn and is going to ask you to get serious and make a commitment to something in this area. The ninth house rules over the justice system, foreign lands or foreign places. It rules over our higher belief system. It rules over judges, gurus and priests. So essentially the ninth house also rules over religion. 
Gemini, if you've had an ongoing lawsuit, this is the time that you're going to hear of, this is the time you're going to hear some serious news about this lawsuit. And it could be news that is to your liking or perhaps not. It all depends on what is really going on in your own natal birth chart. How is this lunation aspecting your planets? I think it could be positive news simply because Gemini is an air sign and Gemini is an air sign. So that means that Gemini is going to have a trine aspect to this lunation, making the energy flow harmoniously. So perhaps you're going to get some good news, good news, which is going to make some, which is going to require you to make some serious changes and commitments to something in the area of your ninth house. Remember the ninth house also rules higher education. That's universities and colleges. Perhaps you're going to get a final decision or a response to your application. And this is going to require you to get serious about education. And it's going to require, it's going to require you to get serious about education. The ninth house rules over our future. This is a future house. It's a Jupiterian house. And you're also getting a lovely aspect of a sextile from transiting Jupiter in the sign of Aries. Gemini is hosting Mars, who has been retrograde in your sign for a very long time and Mars is now finally moving direct. So this energy flowing between these two houses is very positive and supportive and bringing opportunities. Your ruling planet Mercury is not involved in this lunation. Mercury is currently transiting the sign of Capricorn. Mercury just went direct. This is very positive news. This is supporting positive movement in any unique ideas or inventions the ones that you've been contemplating or procrastinating on for a while since Mars was moving retrograde and not really allowing you to move forward. The day after this lunation, all the planets are moving direct. You have no more excuses. It's time to push your agenda. Cancer Ascendant Sun or Moon is happening in your eighth house. This is where you're going to have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings. As we all know, whenever you initiate something, something else will have to come to a close. This is a house where you're also going to be required to get serious and make some type of commitment because of the Venus Saturn conjunction. The eighth house is already a very deep house. So Cancer is going to feel this one very intensely, even though Cancer does not aspect the sign of Aquarius. The other reason you will feel this lunation intensely is the fact that the, your, is the fact that your ruling planet is always involved in any lunation. And at this lunation, the moon is in the eighth house. The moon in the eighth house is in detriment. It is in detriment because it, because it would rather be in the second house, the Taurus house. The eighth house is a Scorpionic house. So back on that Scorpio theme, the moon just recently left a conjunction to Pluto, which rules Scorpio. So there are definitely some deep transformative issues. There are definitely some deep transformative issues that you may be dealing with at this time. The eighth house rules over sex death deep transformation and taxes it also rule this is the house we this is the house where we hide our secrets the, the, and those secrets could be secrets that we hide even from ourselves the eighth house rules over the occult deep intimate relationships this is the house where we bond with another person where we get fully naked with our emotions and sexually this is a house of shared finances other people's money like loans and mortgages or other type of financial windfalls money that you didn't earn it also rules over inheritances so as you can see there could be so many things that could be happening at this lunation and it all just depends on how all the aspects are, as are aspecting your own plan are aspecting planets in your chart for some it could be a new beginning as a result of somebody passing and you receiving an inheritance th therefore changing your life in a positive way because now you have this money that you can use to that you can use to improve your life but you have to deal with the fact that somebody has passed if others will have a new beginning in this area because they because perhaps you've been approved for a loan you've got that you've been approved for a loan and now you're a homeowner and because you're a homeowner you have now this commitment and responsibility to paying a mortgage others who have been dating for a while could have a new beginning in the fact that they're taking this and they're taking that relationship to the next level perhaps you're going to decide to start living together and share resources so there is a seriousness there in the fact that now perhaps you are responsible for another person 
so cancer this full moon could be very transformative and very emotional if you need support at this time just remember i have a special discount for 40 percent off most of my readings book now leo ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your seventh house this is the area where you will have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever you begin something new something has to come to a close this is also the area where you're going to be required to make some type of commitment you're going to be you're going to be required to get serious and make some type of commitment the seventh house is an angle house so whenever an angle house is activated it activates all the other angles this means that there could be brand new, this means that whatever brand new beginnings happen in this area they're going to affect all the other areas in your in your chart the seventh house opposes the ascendant so this means that leo is going to have some oppositions in their partnership marriage or business area and since this house squares the mc whatever changes happen with your whatever changes or new beginnings that happen here are going to affect your standing in society the 10th house the 10th house opposes the ic these changes are going to affect you deeply emotionally they're also going to affect your home these changes are going to be very transformative for you the ascendant because that is also activated the seventh house rules over our serious committed relationships marriage partnerships business agreements and business it also rules over our open enemies as you all know a marriage or business partner is somebody you know who could later on become an open enemy as a result of a disagreement some of you may have to get serious about settling some type of disagreement in this area if things have not been going well in your marriage this is the time that unfortunately one of you is going to ask for a divorce because they've reached their limits Saturn is the Saturn is the planet that rules limits and boundaries you could have a new beginning in that your marriage has reached its limit and you're getting divorced and for others who have been in a dating situation for a very long time perhaps your partner will give you an ultimatum at this time make a commitment marry me let's move in together or get out of this relationship so essentially that means some of you are going to decide to to propose to your partner and transform that relationship to a deep committed relationship so so leos are going to be dealing with issues that concern that concern other people tough decisions may have to be made at this time your ruling planet the sun is always involved in any lunation but you're going to feel this lunation even much more intensely simply because a few days before this lunation the sun up conjuncted pluto in capricorn in fact this conjunction is still a part of this lunation so something about your identity or your standing in society or something to do with the important males in your life may have been brought up recently some deeply transformative issues may have surfaced at this time issues that you may be forced to deal with finally at the time of this lunation this is not going to be one of the easiest lunations leo pluto is going to go into your seventh house in march this is going to bring some type of death and deep transformation to this area so the fixed signs are going to go through a very transformative stage so if you need further support i suggest that you book a reading with me Virgo ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your sixth house this is where this is where you're going to have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever you begin something new something will come to a close this is also the house where you're going to be asked to get serious and make a commitment and that is because of the saturn venus conjunction the sixth house rules over our daily routine our daily eating habits our exercise regimen it also rules over our work the work that we do it rules over our co-workers the eighth house the sixth house also rules over our pets i always forget to mention this because i don't have a pet so your pet falls under this house you do have a daily routine with your pet you could have a brand new beginning with any of these issues if you've been having an ongoing dispute with a co-worker this is the time that things are going to come to a head and some dis some tough decisions are going to have to be made and if you've been working in a hostile work environment this is the time that you're going to make the tough decision to maybe remove yourself quit your job from this 
toxic environment or, or perhaps you're going to make a decision to initiate or to initiate a lawsuit against your employer and since this house also rules over our health and our eating habits some of you are some of you are going to reach the some of you are going to reach the limit with your bad habits perhaps you're overeating you're an alcoholic you you or perhaps you smoke this is the time that you're going to make a decision to quit these habits once and for all and Saturn is going to give you this support because Saturn likes when you restrict yourself and make tough decisions so if this is you this is the time to make this is the time to just go for it and this is the time to just go for it and quit cold turkey and for others that have been unemployed for a very long time this is the time that you may begin a new job a new job that requires commitment and seriousness a new job that will possibly restrict certain freedoms in your life and it's going to require you to be really serious and commit to this and commit to this new employment and if you do so saturn is here saturn will it's very possible that you have it's very possible that this job stays in your life for a very long time your ruling planet mercury is transiting direct in the sign of capricorn mercury is not necessarily aspecting this lunation you're, you're, so you have to look for help and support elsewhere in your chart so virgo and aquarius don't aspect each other so this means that you're possibly going to be dealing with old issues so issues that need your serious attention in the Aquarius house and for some of you who have pets and their health has not been up to par this is the time that you possibly have to make a decision to take the pet to take the pet to the vet and for some people who don't have insurance this is the time that you may have to, this, this is the time it's going to require you to make some serious sacrifices using your own money for the health of your pet to save your pet and remember Venus rules the things that we love and value it also rules over our finances so this is literally the situation that could be going on in this area Libra ascendant Sun or moon this lunation is happening in your fifth house this is the area where you're going to be this is the area where you're going to have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever there's a brand new beginning something has to come to an end or a close this is the area where you're going to be asked to get serious or perhaps make a commitment libra is an air sign so therefore this means that you're aspecting this lunation by a trine aspect this is very very supportive and harmonious energy that's going to allow energy to flow between the houses in a supportive way this is going to be a positive lunation for you, Libra. We always want to see a lunation in the fifth house. The fifth house rules over our creativity. The fifth house rules over our creative ability and our children, our children being our greatest creation. It rules over our talents, talents that we could possibly use to start a business and actually make money from. The fifth house also rules over entertainment gambling the lottery it also rules love making and romance but most important of all the fifth house rules over good luck our past life good luck good luck karma good luck karma that we earned in our past life this is like a karmic credit card that is there for you to use in this lifetime you earned it because of the good deeds that you did earlier in this lifetime or in a past lifetime if you believe in that so your karma credit card is activated at this new moon some of you will have a brand new beginning with your children or perhaps with a romantic partner if your children have been hate if your children have been behaving badly this is the time that you're going to decide so to lay down some rules and restrictions and for some of you who have a gambling habit and it's getting out of hand this is the time that you're going to decide to perhaps stop gambling so much or perhaps get some help and when it comes to romantic relationships if a romantic relationship has been if you've been unhappy in a romantic relationship for a while this is the time that you're going to decide to break up with your romantic partner or perhaps one of you is going to make an ultimatum and demand a t and demand some type of commitment and for those that have been wanting to start a family but are afraid of the responsibility this is the time that you're probably going to have to make a decision whether you're going to begin this family or not whichever way you want to look at it a commitment is going to be a commitment has to be made in this area 
whether it's with your children your lover your business or your entertainment and other habits perhaps you're partying too much and it's affecting your romantic relationship or it's affecting your relationship with your children this is the time that you're going to have to make a firm decision and set boundaries somehow or perhaps set some boundaries for yourself and others in this area your ruling planet Venus is very involved at this lunation because Venus is conjunct Saturn the other ruler of this lunation and Venus just completed a square with Uranus who is in the sign of Taurus Venus is hosting Uranus and the North Node in your sister sound in your sister sign Taurus Venus is conjunct Saturn Th this conjunction will bring limitation and restriction so essentially this means that you are being restricted personally especially if libra is your ascendant if libra is your moon sign it's some type of restriction with your emotions or with your home area your fourth house area and if this is your son you're going to feel some type of restriction with your identity your standing in society or with the work that you do so as you can see, it really depends on how this lunation is aspecting your is aspecting your plan the planets in your natal birth chart. This is why it's important to get a reading in order for you to figure out what is really going on because this could be really life changing for some of you Libras. Make some tough decisions, set some boundaries and some limits. This energy is going to feel this energy is going to support those new beginnings. You have the trine aspect to this lunation. So Scorpio ascendant sun or moon. This lunation is happening in your fourth house. This is where you will have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings. As we all know, whenever you begin something new, something has to come to a close. This is also the area where you're being asked to get serious and make a commitment. The fourth house is an angle house. So that means that whenever an angle house is activated, it activates all the other angles in your chart. Or the fourth house opposes the MC, the tenth house. This is an this is a parental axis. So that means some of you will have some type of new beginning where you'll have to get serious with the with the home area, in the home area, or with a parent. It could be your mother or your father, depending on who is the more nurturing parent. Depending on who is the more nurturing parent. All the changes that you're going to make in your fourth house are ultimately going to affect your partnerships because the fourth house squares the descendant the fourth house also squares the ascendant which is you so this means that you will feel this lunation personally and intensely this lunation could turn your life upside down the fourth house is the most intimate and sensitive area of our child this is the area where we are at home naked and comfortable this area rules over our mother our family our ancestors it also rules over our homeland so essentially that means you could have a new beginning with any of those in any in any of those areas if you've been wanting to move from the house that you're living in presently this could be the time that you make that decision to move perhaps you've been living there for a very long time and it's very difficult to detach from this to, de to detach from this area you're going to be pushed to make a decision at this time because remember you are receiving a square aspect a square aspect is a challenging aspect that 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 pushes us to make decisions if there's been an ongoing issue with one of your parents this is the time that you're finally going to make a tough decision this could be a decision to put your mother or your father in a home if others of you that own a home and you've been struggling to make your payments this is the time that you make a decision to let go of this mortgage and sell this property and for some of you if you've also been having problems paying your mortgage or your rent unfortunately because of the Venus Saturn conjunction this is the time that you will be either evicted or you decide to move and on the positive note because this could turn out very positively for some some of you who have been contemplating and being contemplating and procrastinating about making a huge commitment to have a mortgage own a home this is the time that you will have a new beginning in this area because you finally made the decision to you finally made the decision to sign on the dotted line and become a home owner which requires a long-term commitment a certain a saturnian commitment Saturn run Saturn cycles are 29 years and most mortgages really run for about 30 years this is a serious commitment that you'll be making at this time 
and for some Scorpios this is the time that you're going to make a decision to have an aging parent uh, or another family member to have you could decide to help them in that you move them into your home bringing more restriction and responsibility in this area and for some of you it could be a relationship or a romantic partner yeah, that you decide to start living with again bringing some type of commitment to that partnership the venus saturn conjunction is really important to you they both rule your angles when angle rulers are activated they definitely bring change and transformation in your life this is where the partnership theme is emphasized for you scorpio because venus does rule your descendant so venus being conjuncted by saturn that rules your home area this is requiring some type of commitment limitations or seriousness in your relationships relationships that affect your living situation your home area or your deep emotions this is a serious lunation for you scorpio your ruling planet mars is not directly aspecting this lunation mars just recently went direct so this means that your gemini area is energized you're feeling much more positive about pushing things forward your other ruling planet pluto is intimately involved in this lunation because there was a conjunction of pluto and the sun are in close proximity to this lunation so essentially this means that you are feeling this lunation personally and intimately your ruling planets are your ruling planets are activated by the conjunction and the trine aspect so whatever decisions you make at this time are going to lead to some positive and transformative results sagittarius ascendant sun hormone this lunation is happening in your third house this is where you're going to have a brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings because we all know whenever you begin something new something has to come to a close this is the area where you're going to have to get serious about something in this Aquarius house because of the Saturn Ven because of the Venus Saturn conjunction. The third house rules over our siblings, our neighbors, it rules over our immediate environment. It also rules over the gadgets that we use every day to make life easier. That could also be your vehicle that you use to go around that, that you use to get from one place to another. The third house also rules over communication. It rules over the internet. It rules over our computers and our phones. The third house is the house of the mind. It rules over our thinking. It rules over our thinking and basic education. So this is the house that also rules over our learning abilities, our ability to learn new skills. So essentially, this is a house of making an effort. Sagittarius is a fire sign. There isn't a sexual aspect to the sign of Aquarius. This is a supportive and harmonious aspect. Again, emphasizing the fact that you will have to make effort to take advantage. You will, you will have to make an effort to take advantage of all, to take advantage of any opportunities that are going to come to you at the time of this lunation. So if you don't use this energy, this energy is just going to dissipate. Some of you may decide to start learning a new language and we all know, and we all know that learning a new language is not easy. It's going to require some real commitment here. And some of you will decide to learn a some of you will decide to go for further training and learn a new skill, a new skill that is possibly going to change your earning ability. Since the third house rules over our immediate environment, some of you may make a decision to leave your neighborhood, perhaps a neighborhood that you are attached to because you grew up there. This might be time for you to grow up, perhaps make a move, a first time move, a move out of perhaps your parents' home and this move is going to require some type of commitment and seriousness because you're going to be responsible for your own rent and bill and for your own rent and bills. And for others, it could be a new beginning with your brothers, it could be a new beginning with your siblings or with your or with your neighbor. And if you've been wanting to start writing a book or perhaps a, perhaps a play, this is the time you're going to decide to get serious about it and start writing. This is a positive lunation for you, Sagittarius, especially because your ruling planet, Jupiter, is currently conjunct Juno in the sign of Aries at around four degrees of or at four, at four degrees of Aries, this is a special conjunction that's going to require you to make some type of commitment in your Aries house. 
Jupiter is aspecting this lunation by a sextile aspect and this lunation is aspecting your sign by, by another sextile aspect. So all this is very positive and supportive energy. You are going to be presented with opportunities at the time of this lunation because your ruling planet is also aspecting Mars, who is now direct in the sign of Gemini. He's aspecting Mars by another sextile. This is the lunation of opportunities for you, Sagittarius. This is the lunation that you implement all those ideas that you thought were too weird or too different and they've been stuck in your head. This is time to really put them down. This is the, this is the, time, this is the time to make them into reality. So, so Sagittarius, stop procrastinating and think th and thinking only of the bigger picture. This is the time to really put down what's in your head. This is the time to go for those big initiations. You're being highly supported at this. You're being highly supported with the energy that's going on at this lunation. Capricorn ascendant sun or moon. This lunation is happening in your second house. This is where you'll have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever you initiate something something has to come to a close this is also the area where you're being asked to get really serious about this is the area where you're also being asked to get really serious and make a commitment the second house rules over what we love and value it rules over our finances our ability to earn a living it also rules over the family that we make with another person it also rules over family. This family is the family that you choose, the family that you make with another person, or the friends that we call family because we've known them for, because we've known them for our whole life and they feel like family. The second house also rules over the mouth, what goes in and what comes out. The second house also rules over our self-esteem. How have you been feeling about yourself lately? This lunation could bring an element of seriousness and a requirement and re and will require you to commit in any of in any of those areas so capricorn if you own your own business and the elements of your business that have not been working out or perhaps you've just not been really serious about taking your about taking your business about taking your business to the next level this is the time that this lunation is going to require you to make a commitment and get serious about this and since venus also rules over finances and the things that we love and value some of you may have to cut back make some restrictions with the way you've been spending money or perhaps some of you will experience some type of loss in this area some of you may have to face the reality that your business plan is not working so, and, and it's time to make that tough decision to close your business Venus rules your fifth house where there's where the, where the where the transiting north node is currently and there's the conjunction of Uranus and the north node which is squaring this lunation therefore make and pushing you to make some tough decisions in this area and some of you this decision might have to do with your entertainment your creative ability or with your children but and of course your children are a big part of your family a big part of your creativity so all these areas are being activated in your chart and the only way to really find out what's going on is by getting a reading so we can see how all these act all these planets are aspecting your own aspecting planets in your chart and since the second house rules the mouth what goes in and out some of you may decide to restrict yourself by going on a diet restricting yourself you're not going to allow yourself to eat all the chocolates the candy and the fast food this is very positive this is very positive energy for you to begin a restrictive diet it's very possible that the saturn venus conjunction brings some type of negative feelings about yourself or, or about how others see you therefore affecting your self-esteem negatively and if this is the situ and if this is your situation you're going to decide to make some major changes you're going to commit to some imp to, to making some improvement about your appearance how others see you these changes are going to result to a higher self-esteem so there it is Capricorn I've already said what your ruling planet is doing at this at the time of this lunation if you haven't listened to the whole introduction of this video I suggest you go back and listen to it because it's going to shed more light on all the other areas that are being that are being activated at the time of this lunation 
Aquarius ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your first house this is where you'll have a brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever you begin something something has to come to a close the first house is an angle house it is the ascendant so this is going to affect you very personally because it's going to affect how others see you or how you want others to see you and when the first house is activated it opposes the ascent it opposes the descendant this is the area of others your partnerships your marriage this formation is also going to square your MC. So whatever changes you make with yourself, they are going to affect how you see, they are going to affect your standing in society or your job. The ascendant also squares the IC. That is your home area. It, it also opposes the MC. So this is a parental axis. That means there could be changes in your home. There could be changes with your family or with your ancestry. This could be a life changing new moon for you. Let's not forget, Aquarius, that you're going to be highly activated by Pluto, who's going to be transiting your sign, who's going to enter your sign in March for about, and stay there for about 20 years. Saturn has been transiting your sign for about three years, and he's leaving your sign in March. Pluto is being highly activated at this lunation. So perhaps you're going to get a message of what Pluto is going to change in this area. And remember, Pluto brings death and transformation to whatever it touches. So your life is definitely coming up for a major change. Saturn is completing this journey and they do say that Saturn leaves you a gift when he finishes transiting a house and especially in the house that he rules. So maybe, so maybe there's something really positive coming up for you. Uh, so maybe there is something really positive coming up for you Aquarius. So the ascendant is the body. It is you It's it, it is the house of the self and how others see you So this means that some of you Aquarians are going to make a serious decision Perhaps to stop a habit that has been affecting how others see you That has been affecting how others see you perhaps you drink too much or you smoke or you overeat this uh, this is an excellent lunation for you to begin a diet, a restrictive diet, because remember your ruling planet, your traditional ruler Saturn is conjunct Venus at this time. This could bring a restriction in the areas of what we love and value, or you could just restrict yourself from splurging on the things that you love and value or the things that you love to eat. Yes, if you've not listened to the beginning of this video, I suggest that you listen to the whole introduction of this video because there's more information in the begin in the introduction that could that could help you evaluate how this lunation is going to affect you how this lunation is going to affect you and if you're still confused and you need further guidance i suggest that you take advantage of the 40 percent off most of my readings this is a limited time special so make sure you book now this is a positive lunation that could really change your whole that could really change your whole life it could really change how others see you aquarius you only get one new moon one full moon a year this new moon is going to be part of your solar return chart making this very very important if you have your ascendant your moon or your sun sign at or your sun at one and one degree of Aquarius this is very personal and this is the year that you're going to have major brand new beginnings in the area where Aquarius is going to fall whichever house Aquarius is going to be in your solar return chart so this is an excellent time for you to book a solar return chart reading Pisces ascendant Sun or moon this lunation is happening in your 12th house this is where you're going to have brand new beginnings and perhaps some endings as we all know whenever you have a as we all know, whenever you have a brand new beginning, something has to come to a close. This is also the area where you're going to be asked to get serious because of the Saturn, because of the Venus Saturn conjunction. The 12th house is a difficult house. It's difficult in that it's a hidden house. So whatever is happening, in, so whatever is, whatever is happening at this lunation is something that has stayed hidden. The 12th house also rules over our, the 12th house also rules over generational karma and generational karma is karma that you didn't earn this is karma that is passed on to you simply because of your last name or the family that you belong to 
The 12th house also rules over our self-sabotaging habits and self-sabotaging habits could be that you drink too much, you escape too much, or perhaps you do drugs, or perhaps you have unhealthy affairs and hidden relationships. With the luminaries both in this house, this house is lit up. So whatever has been hidden is going to surface at this time and you're going to be forced to have to deal with it. The 12th house also rules over foreign places, far off lands. It rules over our psychic ability, the other side. So perhaps you'll be getting some messages from your ancestors at this time. 12th house also rules over our hidden enemies. Your hidden enemies are going to be exposed at the time of this lunation. And the hidden enemy could be, your, could be you yourself with your self-sabotaging habits. So with that said, this means that this new moon is going to be a point where some of you are going to decide to stop self-sabotaging. And if it's drinking, drugs, or bad, or, or, or unhealthy relationships, unrequited love, this is the time that you're going to decide to to release these habits, to release these negative, to release these toxic relationships. Some of you are going to decide to go into rehab or get some or get some type of spiritual help. These changes could be life transforming. They're going to require commitment and Saturn supports and Saturn is going to support you restricting yourself. Saturn is going to support you restricting yourself and committing to this change and committing to this change. It is an excellent time for you to make that commitment to better yourself and deal with your habits once and for all. Your ruling planet, Neptune, is aspecting this lunation by a wide sextile. So there's some supportive energy there that will, give, that, that will, that will bring some type of opportunities to improve, to improve things in those houses. Jupiter, your other ruling planet, is currently transiting in the sign of Aries and is conjunct asteroid Juno. Some of you are going to have to make a commitment of some sort in the area of, in your Aries house. Jupiter is casting a very positive aspect to this lunation. Jupiter is forming a sextile aspect. This is another supportive and harmonious aspect that will bring opportunities that will make making these new making these brand new initiations possible. The sextile aspect, however, requires you to take advantage of the opportunities. You have to make effort. You, make, you have to make some efforts here. If you don't take advantage of the opportunities, this energy is going to dissipate. Pisces does not directly aspect the sign of Aquarius, so this might not be the biggest lunation for you this year, but you have a lot of supportive energy that you can use to restrict yourself in some way. Venus Saturn conjunction is asking you to restrict yourself in the 12th house. And when you do so, you're going to get really positive results, results that are going to stay in your life for a very long time. So in that sense, this aspect, this lunation is, this lunation is positive and your ruling planet Jupiter is casting a very supportive sextile aspect. So, so, so Pisces, this is really time for you to reinvent yourself, deal with your hidden issues so that when there's a lunation on your ascendant, you can come out as a new person. Remember that I have a 40% discount off most of my readings. It's a limited time discount. So if you need further guidance, this is an excellent time for you to book me for a reading at rachel-mayo.com.